Do you struggle to ask for help? Why does it feel so hard? Well, in this episode, we talk about how to be brave enough to ask for help. And I'm joined by my client, Dominic Morales, owner of Pumana Plantas, a plant shop in Berkeley, California. And before we go deep, do me and my team a favor, hit that follow button on the WC and Allies Business and Career Real Talk podcast in whatever platform you are listening to this podcast in. My team and I created this podcast for accessible education, and we want more women of color and allies to have access to this. And how podcast platforms measure a successful podcast is seeing how many people hit that follow button. So just pause this episode, hit that follow button, and come back right on. And let's drop the beat. Hey, I'm Elaine Lucartas. I'm a business and career coach for women of color and allies. LA Weekly awarded me the number one thought leader and Apple News named me one of the top five business coaches. Done doing the most as a woman of color or ally. And you want to create your own definition of success and happiness? Well, grab your coffee, tea, or boba, and let's do some business and career real talk. Legacy leaders, I am excited to have my Adding. Adding means, how would you describe it, Dom? Like little sister, little sibling? Yeah. So it's in Tagalog. So I have my Adding, my client, Dom, founder and owner of Pamana Plantas. Dom, welcome. <laughs> Hi, Lane. How are you? I'm good. I'm going to be distracted by looking at your beautiful scenery. Dom, Dom, actually, can you share what you do? You are the owner of Pamana Plantas. For some people who don't know what Pamana means, Plantas, I think people could kind of guess. But yeah, yeah, share where you're based, what you do. Yeah, I own Pamana Plantas, which is a Filipino family legacy inspired plant shop. The legacy is the resilience that ran through and still runs through my family's veins. And I connect that to plants because I believe that plants are resilient. And we are based in Berkeley. Yeah, we do lots of different events and collaborations with other small businesses in support of their growth and our growth. You've been crushing it, though. You've been in biz. You've had Pamana Plantas for a year now, right? No, almost or- three Three? Okay. Why did I think a year? Okay. Happy three well, years. You're... We, we've we been working for almost You and I have been yeah. working together for about like a year, but you've had the shop for about three years. I would yeah. love for you to share the story of how your uncle is the legacy behind this. Yeah. So my uncle, he took care of me and my sister when we were younger. And basically he he had Alzheimer's as well as only half of his body was fully functioning because of an infection in his brain. And regardless of that, like he was still the one to take care of me, my sister, and the one to always want to live life and like bring positivity wherever he went. And he took care of my uncle, just like was a very loving man. When he passed is kind of when I realized that many of my family members embody that Brazilian spirit. Like my mom, she is a cancer survivor as well as my aunt. And both of my grandparents or grandmas, they ran businesses in the Philippines to support their families. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what kickstarted the shop and pushed me to really open. And I am so glad that I did. I'm smiling so big right now because you look like an angel. Like we're we're recording this on video, right? But there is like a light line literally streaming over Dom's head. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, um, that's actually family. Go yeah, ahead. they're they're right there. Do you see it? <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm not gonna say anything to piss you off because your ancestors are gonna come at me. But for those of you that don't even know, I have a similar kind of plant story. But I'm Ilocano, kind of like a subset of Filipinos, and Ilocanos are known for farming. So my dad and my grandparents immigrated here to work in the farmlands to be grapevine workers. So I was showing before we hit record with Dom because Dom is obviously a plant shop owner and has a ton of plants at home. I was like, look, Dom, my fortune tree is growing. My goal this year has to not kill a plant. That was my goal, which I'm sure, Dom, how often do you hear that statement when people walk into your plant shop? 
a lot, actually. And honestly, I still do. You know, there's a lot in here to kill, <laughs> you know, but I try my best not to. But it's it's no shame if you do. It's just it's definitely something that you have to to learn. And that's OK. Right. There's that's that's what life is. Yeah. Well, since we are oh, both Panais, both a woman of color, both women, I want to I I have loved working with you because just so much insights and reflections that you provide. And I know a lot of your plants help share that with you. And I wanted to talk about why it's important to pull yourself up, how to be brave enough to ask for help. Why do you feel like as a woman of color, it was so hard for you to initially ask for help, not necessarily to have a business coach, but for anything, maybe even like, hey, mom, hey, hey, Tito, like, how do I make sure this plant doesn't die? Why do you think it's been so hard? <laughs> Being Filipino, with that in mind, and in my family, it's just been not like when you ask for help, it's kind of like they tell they kind of make you feel a little dumb. Like you should have already known this or like I told you so kind of thing. And like, so it's never that's been so aggressive. Something. Thank you. <laughs> right. Right. It's never been something that's like, oh, it's OK to ask for help or like you should ask for help. So. Yeah, um, it's never been something that I practiced growing up. I don't even really think our current society promotes that. Um, maybe more so now, but in general, it's kind of like literally put, pick yourself up from your own bootstraps, right? Yeah. What made you finally like unlearn that and ask for help? And why was it helpful for you to do that? Well, I didn't unlearn that until I started working with Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> with you <laughs> but what made me ask for help was I heard, I li was at a women's conference and someone one of the speakers shared how she had a business coach and like I was like oh there there are those and I talked to her <laughs> after <laughs> yeah I talked to her after the the conference and I was like how do you know when you need to hire one or like blah 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 and she's like you just when you know you need help you should go ask for it and I was like okay and then that started my search for a business coach. And when going through it, why was it helpful for you? What did you realize when you finally asked for help versus when you tried to figure things out on your own? It's kind of like I had a cheerleader on my on my side that like knew exactly what I was feeling, the hardships that I'm experiencing as an entrepreneur, right? And like actually coaching with you had like really broadened my perspective or, or gave me a new perspective, if anything, ar yeah. around what entrepreneurship is. And like the thing that you taught me that really resonated with me is like, I, I don't have to do it all on my own, you know, and you, mm. and you should want to build your tribe. You want to find your tribe. That's something that you said to me, like from the, at the beginning, I didn't have anybody really besides you. And at the end of our term agreement, <laughs> um, <laughs> We, I had, I had a, a bunch of women who were surrounding me in support of, of me and what I wanted to do. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I will, I mean, like to brag about you, what you've also learned, like not just you don't have to do it yourself, but I know you started hiring like a bookkeeper. Yes. You hired uh, the amazing Claudia Rucker. I have a podcast episode with her. In terms of understanding your PL reports. Yes. You actually got more addicted to asking for help. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And, and why is that actually important as opposed to, because, you know, that thing in our heads, like we could figure this out on my own. What did you learn by even not just asking me for help? I just, I just want our listeners to know, like, I know there tends to feel like shame to ask for help because unfortunately society, our parents and culture tell us to, but once you start asking for help, it's like, wait, what? Yeah this can be easier? Like, what did yeah. you undergo when you realize I can actually not do this on my own? Yeah, well, it's 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 kind of a very layered concept for me, right? So in being Filipino, we're, we're not taught to, to spend money on like things that are going to help us, for example, like therapy, or like someone who's going to help us with our taxes, because we can do it on our on our own, right? And it was working through that ideology that was one part of it of asking for help like not being shameful to ask for help or not feeling bad for spending money on something that's going to help me you know like Elaine really pushed pushed for that like I got a therapist and I got a bookkeeper 
And I, and like, yeah, I, I did get addicted to asking for help because I just saw how much it like really positively impacted my life. It gave me time and space to think about what I want to do and like how I want to do things. So, and that's, that's something that Elaine started off with, like find out what you hate, kind of hate, like, and love and delegate those other things that you don't love to other people so that you can focus on what you do love. And, and that's allowed me to live in more alignment with who I am. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know this assignment, it's because I give it to my clients. I kind of, I call it the zones of genius grid and you could read the book, The Big Leap. So have four quadrants, one that you, things you really love doing, things you like, like you're really great at. And if you don't like it, you'd be happy. Things you don't like and things you hate. Usually the quadrant of what you love and what you hate is easy to fill out. And the other two is kind of hard, but brain dump everything because there are things you're going to have to do. Like, for example, in our households, how many of you are so excited to throw the trash away? I'm not. I mean, how many of us women are so excited to get our pap smear? Nope, but we got to do it. That you cannot delegate, by the way. Right. <laughs> but in our personal life, there's even there's things like, like, for example, I have clients who are mothers and laundry takes up so much time. So they hire someone to fold the laundry. But figuring that out so that you could focus on what you want to do. And I see your answers are shining on you behind. I see that sun that's bright, Dom, by the way. But actually, I would love for you to share what are, I want you to speak it into existence as if this is a coaching session. What do you want this year? Or what you feel comfortable sharing? Yeah. Like it could even be as like, I want to travel more. I, you know. Yeah. What do I want this year? That is a great question. I know you did this work, Dom, <laughs> because you did it with both me and Claudia. So yes. don't pretend you don't know. <laughs> well, I, I do. I want to... I want to live in alignment with my values more, like both in my business and in my life. I feel like if I start there, everything else will kind of fall into where it's supposed to be, right? And so that means healing my relationship with myself in all the ways, in therapy, in in business, all of it. So I really just want to focus on on me and like, not add so many things to my plate like I had done in the past because that's what I thought success meant and I really want to just enjoy I want to enjoy the ride so different from where you're at when you first contacted me because how did you feel when you first met me I was like please help me I don't know what to do Um, (laughs) (laughs) I hope you have the answers (laughs) legacy leader I know what you're thinking Elaine You have such good stuff here. I want more. So if you want more tips and advice for your business career and life, sign up for my gifts and gifts newsletter at elainelu.com forward slash join. That's J-O-I-N. And here's three things you'll get when you join because I'm like Santa Claus. I love giving. Number one, funny gifts because who doesn't love memes and pop culture references? This newsletter is so fetch. Number two, receive actionable gifts. That's business, career, and life tips that you can start doing today. Third, the gift of me. Not only do you get my wins, but also my failures, my reflections. My gifts and gifts newsletter is like an up-to-date diary. Think Zynga or Life Journal for my fellow millennials, where I share vulnerable stories, relatable mistakes, and important life tips like what to watch on Netflix, like when's the next Bridgerton season. So if you're ready for those fun gifts and actionable gifts to create a more sustainable life, then join my newsletter at elainelu.com forward slash join. That's J-O-I-N. All right, let's get back to the episode. But actually, what did you realize when you're asking me the question of, I hope you have the answers? What did you realize for yourself? Working with Elaine, I realized that I had the answers inside me and Elaine just kind of brought them out, guided me to them, asked the right questions so that I can know them more, like know me more. And and she taught me how to pull myself up by my bootstraps with the help <laughs> of others. <laughs> What advice would you have for people 
who are having a hard time to ask for help. I'm not even saying like entrepreneurs, but just in general, like maybe somebody needs help because they're just anxious and they feel overwhelmed. Yeah. I think that when you ask for help, you're advocating for yourself, whether that's you right now or your younger self, you you're fighting for, for some version of you and, and you can't ever go wrong if you do that. Right. (laughs) <laughs> you're staying true to who you are you just kind of have to like you have to believe in that power that you have and so um, just really just do it just ask because you can't because the worst they're gonna say is no and who cares if they say no or if you get a rejection it's just part of it's part of it it's part of the dips and the highs and in the ride right yeah well, ask and they say no, then ask someone else. Uh, yeah. But that's actually another thing too. You get to have agency and choice of who you feel safe with, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So Dom, I'm going to change this podcast a little bit if that's cool with you. I didn't even give you a heads up, but I can't like not do this podcast and not ask about plants. <laughs> yeah, so do <laughs> what do you love about plants? <laughs> what I love about plants is that they're wise. Like you can... Like there's so many lessons to learn from them. For example, like they intuitively know that there are seasons mm. in, in, yeah, in the world, right? So during the springtime, they're putting out new growth, a lot, a lot of new growth. They're in the, in the, in the fall, they're like kind of slowing down, they're preserving their energy. And in the winter, they, they go to sleep. They, they get rid of the things that don't serve them and so that they can hold their energy, hold their energy to use that in the spring as the cycle goes, right? And so I want to say like, we can look to them when we're in this society that tells us always to be on and, you know, being in this hustle culture, right? Like we have to slow down and we have to eliminate the things that aren't serving us because how else are we going to thrive and survive? (laughs) Yeah. So as we're recording this, we went, you got it too, up in, in NorCal in the Bay. And I'm here in LA. We had like a lot of rain. And I have an orchid in my living room and it was cloudy and three of the flowers came off. I was like bragging about how it was blooming. I'm like, no. And then I texted my dad, sent a picture because my dad ha- is a farmer in Green Thumb. He doesn't farm anymore. He does garden in the backyard. But anyways, I'm like, dad, what, what did I do? He's like, oh, this is normally Lane. Like flowers come off of plants. And I have to remind myself, it was also cloudy and raining. Mm-hmm. It wasn't getting sun. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate what you said. Like they had to conserve its energy because it's not having that sun yeah. as much. Yeah. You don't always have to bloom. As long, sometimes you just have to be. Mm, yeah. Well, when you take that lesson of the seasons, how have you because it's funny, what I've done with my coaching with you is reminding you about the plants. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to be flowering and blooming all the time. Yeah. What have you learned from your plants within your business and life? I've learned that being an entrepreneur doesn't mean to always hustle and to have something on your plate. And like the way that they make it seem like being an entrepreneur in the society is is kind of like not it goes against nature. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so like nature being being around plants and seeing how they're changing throughout the year it's like it makes sense as to why in the spring like I'm wanting to do things or wanting to like have more collaborations and mm. have more energy right and and in the winter like for example during Christmas season that's kind of like when retail is like the busiest and like we're supposed to be hustling so that we can make it a great like holiday season right so but now like I will keep that in mind that I that it, that is how it's gonna be and so I'm not gonna add a bunch of other things to my plate during that time you know I'm really gonna reflect and preserve my energy so that I can use it in the springtime in the summer yeah. I love that you say that because it's important to see patterns and seasons that happen in your business and life, right? I know for retail, like I have a couple of clients who also have a brick and mortar like you and they sell dog products. They're based in New York and Q4 is really big mm-hmm. and busy. Mm-hmm. So knowing that 
Q3 and Q2 ramps up for that, but knowing that their energy needs to be conserved before Q4. And there's other things you can do. So Dom, I would love for you to share one takeaway or one question for our listeners, whether it comes to plants or learning to ask for help. Mm -hmm. What's something that you would want to share with our listeners today? Well, I thought about this because I was listening to a podcast before this call. One thing I do want to share is, is really enjoy, enjoy the ride, enjoy the, enjoy the in-betweens of what society deems to be successful, right? You have like, it's really the quality of that path that makes you successful. So that's one. (laughs) And, (laughs) And the second thing is like, who, who can you ask? for help and like Mm. you know like ask yourself what what might you need help with that you have been kind of avoiding and really take the time to reflect on that and see where you can ask for that support and I will share you know it's interesting because it's that one thing that we're avoiding is the one thing that we need to focus on always Yeah. And what I have found this past year with a lot of my clients, including myself, has been like numbers and finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, like, oh, no, I'm doing good work in this world. Money's going to come to me. And it's like, wait, where did my money go? I just had like a really great month. What happened? Right. And when you start understanding things, then you are more mindful of things and conscious of it. And that's how law of attraction works. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Dom, for those that might be interested in wanting to work with me because you've worked with me, can you share your experience working with me and advice for them? Yeah. If you're looking for someone who is going to give you all the answers and solve all your problems and, you know, just like you think that you can just hand over all issues, it's not going to be Elaine. She's going to teach you how to to fish rather than hand you the fish. So you have to be willing to do the work and help Elaine pick you up, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So wise. I feel like (laughs) I don't want to call you adding anymore. I want to call you Lola, which means grandma in Tagalog. I'm blessed to be, to be called Lola. (laughs) Because it basically means you're like matriarch. But Dom, thank you so much for your time. And yeah, I know you shared in the beginning, but if anybody wants to come visit, get a plant from you, go to an event, how can they find you? You can find me if you can't, if you're not in the Berkeley area, you can find me on Instagram at Pomana Plantas or on Facebook at Pomana Plantas. But yeah, if you're in the Bay Area, come and visit my shop. We are on Solano Avenue in Berkeley. You get so many compliments about your shop. Can you actually share how your shop looked like before and how you changed it with the plants? I know you love sharing the story <laughs> and then we'll end it. Yes. Yeah, the shop has definitely grown. The only things I knew that I wanted in the shop when I first opened was I knew I wanted a wall of Filipino warrior tattoos to kind of ground mm-hmm. me and remind me like where I come from and, and the strength that our culture holds. I knew I wanted a lot of bamboo and lots of like Filipino food cultural pieces, if that makes sense. Like it's called a bilao, which is a bamboo plate, stuff like that. Like I knew I wanted lots of bamboo to remind people or to show people what the Philippines looks like or could look like if they visited. And then the last thing I knew I wanted was the photos of my family Uh to remind me of why I'm here and to honor them and their resilience. But when I first opened, when I first got the space, the shop was all great. And very cold. And as it's grown over time, it's it's become warmer without a heater because of the plants that I've moved in. And like Elaine knows, I like to share that plants, these plants have shown me the power of community and like being together and like helping each other stay warm and stay humid. And just uh, their energy in here is supporting one another. And it's a daily reminder whenever I open the door and there's a warm, there's a warm draft that comes into, comes on me. <laughs> you got a rainforest in there. I love it. Yeah, Elaine says that they're farting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. So like I said, my dad is, my dad grew up as a farmer, has a garden in the backyard. And 
when we were kids, my dad would say, oh, like we'd go to his backyard. Do you smell that? And I'm like, what? He's like, the plants are farting. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, they're farting oxygen. <laughs> well, it's really funny. It's really good. I mean, yeah. it's true, you know? Yeah. So if you come in here, you'll smell my plants farts. <laughs> By the way, like, no joke. I bring, I was showing my fortune tree to Dom, but I actually bring it with me when I'm about to do, when I do number two next to me, I bring it with me when I shower. So it could get like the water residue. I'm not kidding. Like <laughs> I was like, I am more personal with it than my own boyfriend. I bring it everywhere. Cause I want it to get all those elements to grow. And it won't judge you. No, it not to say that your boyfriend will judge you, but he's not, they're not you. Actually, you know, it thrives. It thrives when it judges me, <laughs> the, the plant. But Dom, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Elaine. As Dom shared, we need to learn from plants that we live in seasons and to honor times when we are not just blooming, but when we need to rest and restore our energy. So if you enjoyed this podcast episode, there are five things you can do if you feel called to do them. One, if you could leave a five-star rating and review, that would mean a lot to me. My team and I created this podcast for accessible education for women of color and allies. And each episode takes about four hours to create. It takes me one hour to prep, another 30 minutes to one hour to record, and my team spends another two hours to edit and market. And number two, because we care about accessible education, share this podcast episode with a friend who is having a hard time asking for help. Share it with them and let them know, hey, it seems like it's normal to have a struggle to ask for help. Third, don't forget to hit that follow button because when you do, it lets the interwebs know how important this podcast is to women of color and allies like you. And number four, if you would like help to create a more sustainable business or career and you want to work with me and my team, then schedule an introductory legacy business and career audit call with me. I only work with 24 clients at one time to ensure each client receives the results they deserve. So you could schedule that audit call with me at elaineloom.com forward slash call. That's E-L-A-I-N-E-L-O-U dot com forward slash call.